The FBI in Peace and War. The FBI in Peace and War is brought to you by refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day as millions do. The lively, long-lasting flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The pleasant chewing adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Another great story based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. Drama, thrills, action. Tonight's story, The Club Date. Be so cruel right in the middle of the night. All right, all right, all right. Hello? Hiya, Joan. It's not Joan. Dari, honey, how are you? I'm terrible. Chuck, what's the idea of calling this time of night? Night? Well, look, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, don't tell me you two lobos are still in bed. Chuck, dear, I will appreciate it muchly if you will refrain from shouting at the top of your lungs this hour of the night. Dari. I also will appreciate it if you will refrain from talking at all so as I can complete my beauty sleep. Okay. I was foolish enough to think the prospect of ten, maybe fifteen thousand fish might wake you up. Darling, who's not away? <laughs> you got a pencil handy? Just give me names, addresses, and serial numbers. Well, the names are Arthur Bruce Ross and Chester Monroe. The address, Sherry Plaza Hotel. They were just in the club for a steam bath, rubbed down, a little flabby, but they're all set to howl. <laughs> Wives gone to the country. Florida country for Christmas, New Year's. All they were missing was a couple of dates, so I figured... You figured you'd rub them down and Joan and me would shake them down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. Anyway, they have your number, so when they call, just give them the business. What are we this time? Beautiful models or beautiful nightclub singers? Beautiful TV actresses. we got to keep current. <laughs> okay, Chuck. You leave it to us. We'll give them the show business. Wanted by the FBI for fraud under the National Stolen Properties Act, Chuck Martin and Dorian Vallandam with aliases. These two, with accomplices, work a very clever swindle in the manner described. Martin, a licensed masseur, secures a position in a private health or athletic men's club and... <laughs> Mr. Ross, Mr. Monroe, five minutes. That's enough steam for you. Uh, that's fine with me, Chuck. We'll be right along. <laughs> you had enough, Chet? I had enough five minutes ago. Come on, everybody. You have to carry us off. Okay. <laughs> Take the sheet with you. You'll be right back in shape after a brisk massage. <laughs> There's nothing like it. Oh, well, after last night, I'll never be back in shape. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah. Well, right this way, gents. Table four and five. Uh, Mr. Monroe, you can have a little sun ray while I work on Mr. Ross, huh? Yeah, but, but let's not work too hard, eh, Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know me, Mr. Ross. The tender touch. Uh, stretch out. Relax now. I'll have you looking like a million. All right. Now, come on. Loosen up. Uh, you okay over there, Mr. Monroe? Hey. <laughs> Chet's out cold, huh? <laughs> hey, he's sound asleep. I uh, don't want him to get too much sun. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> Just say scotch and soda when he's had enough. Chet will come up bouncing. <laughs> oh, this feels better. Uh -huh. Rough night, huh? Well, a little rugged, Chuck, but worth it, believe me. My recommendation was okay, then. Okay. <laughs> Chuck, where in Blazer did you ever find two beauties like that? Huh? Oh, oh, easy there. Oh, now we've got to get these knots out. Yeah, well, I'm glad you and Mr. Monroe enjoyed yourselves. Next time you, you want a couple of dates, just call up yourself, sir. <laughs> Already have, Chuck. <laughs> Next time's tonight. <laughs> oh, a couple of fast workers. Well, I don't know about Chet there, but I went over pretty big. <laughs> I did, huh? Yeah, I guess the old touch still hasn't gone completely anyway. <laughs> Makes you feel kind of young again, you know? <laughs> oh, Joe, <Jay>, turn over. <laughs> Well, I mean, a man needs a girl making a fuss over him again. Well, just don't let a girl know you wear a stomach support for the belly, that's all. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> if there's one thing should be kept secret, it's the... Ah, oh. yes, the phone. Do you mind, Mr. Russell? No, not a bit. I could use the rest, period. Go yeah. right ahead. It's probably an appointment. I'll finish you up as soon as I get back. It won't be a minute. No hurry. Take your time, Chuck. Hello. Hello, Chuck. It's me, Dory. Hey, honey, what did you and Joni do to those guys, anyway? there now? They're practically in a coma. <laughs> we'll pull them out of it by the night. we got a heavy day. <laughs> so I understand. You know, I think it's time to shift into high, don't you? 
why I called. Uh, Joan and I have worked up a telegram. You got a second? Shoot. To Mr. Waldo Jackson, Esquire, Hotel Belmore, Passaic. Proposition we are working on near ready. Suggest you join us immediately. Signed, Joan Dory and Chuck. Okay for sending? Okay for sending. I'll see you later, Dory. Bye. Bye, Chuck. Hey, I'm sorry for the interruption, Mr. Ross. I'm ready to finish you up now. <laughs> Back to the club date in just a moment. Friends, one reason it's a good idea to chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day is that it satisfies you without being rich or filling. You can chew Wrigley's Spearmint after meals, between meals, anytime, and as long as you want. You get your satisfaction from the delicious flavor and the natural, pleasant chewing. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is wholesome and good for you. So make your daily treat Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. It's a treat you can trust for healthful daily enjoyment. Always keep a package or two of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum handy in your purse or pocket. Be sure to get Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Act two of tonight's story on the FBI in Peace and War. The club date. Hello? Miss Valentine, uh, this is Waldo Jackson. Oh, my, but we're formal. Where are you calling from, Waldo, downstairs? Uh huh. Well, come on up, sweetie. We're ready and waiting for you. All right, Dory, what's his name? Ross. Arthur Bruce Ross. Nickname? Artie. Close friends call him Buck. What's his wife's name? Mildred. How long have they been married? Forever. Come on, come on. Well, I celebrated the 25th anniversary this year. Where'd you go last night? Oh, <laughs> where didn't we? Chuck, will you remind these two lame brains that I'm not asking all these questions for amusement? Joan, Dory, be nice. Uh, cooperate, please. Look at me nice this time of night. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. I'd expect us to be devastating again tonight if we don't get our shut off. You're seeing Ross and Monroe again tonight? Sure, we made an impression three nights in a row. <laughs> Impression's no word for it. Should have seen those boys on the rubbing table. Worse even than yesterday. I don't know how you do it, Chuck, but by 7.30, they're all bright and shiny again. Well, it'll be tonight, girls. The big club, El Sirocco, 51. Well, you'll let me know that in the morning. Right now, tell me where it was last night. Where else? The big club, El Sirocco, 51. <laughs> all right, I guess I have enough. Chuck, you can fill me in on the rest. Okay to go back to sleep now? Eh, it's okay, as long as Waldo's on the beam. Am I? Well, looks like to me. Joan, honey, one drink before we take off. Huh? And you're sure this Ross character is going to act according to schedule when I turn up at his office? Well, figure it for yourself. Now, he's a wealthy, respectable citizen. He's got a long-time wife. Fancy apartment, a sweet hunk of moolah in the vault. Go to church. No, straight. So here's this respectable citizen having a ball with his wife out of town. So what's he going to do when his wife's attorney confronts him? Here you are, Chuck. Waldo, how about you? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, what's he going to do, Chuck? He's going to pay you plenty to keep your big mouth shut. That's what. Am I right, girls? As rain. You haven't missed yet. Okay, I'll drink to not missing again. To you, Arthur Bruce, and an A1 performance, counselor. <laughs> FBI identification number 16J21206. Jack Waldo, alias Waldo Jackson, alias Dr. Jackson, alias the counselor. Height, six feet one inch. Morning, yeah. Steve. I've got that stuff from identification. Oh, good. Uh, Dave, you've met Chief of Police Manley. Sure, we worked together on that Braden case. How are you, Chief? Uh, fine, thanks, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, that the file you wanted, Steve? This is it. Oh, and stick around, Dave. You're in on this, too. Oh, I am? Yeah, word from upstairs has us both assigned to the case. Mr. Andrews wants us to work directly with the chief. Okay. What is it? An old friend of the Bureau, Mr. Reynolds. Jack Waldo. Jack Waldo? Alias Waldo Jackson, alias the counselor. Oh, and... that one. When did he get out? Eight months ago. Well, I guess he turned up eight months ago completely rehabilitated. He did, in Orlon, Indiana and rehabilitated one of its leading citizens out of $15,000. Blackmail? Well, you might call it that. He posed as the lawyer of the victim's wife. The man had been getting about on an out-of-town business trip, and uh, presumably his wife heard about it and was secretly gathering evidence for a divorce. Now, that sounds familiar. Why the chief is here, Dave. When our circular on Chuck Martin and uh, Dorian Valendam reached his office, 
The two things fit together hand in glove. It looks like their old routine with Waldo added. Any idea how we can catch up to them this time? Well, we've only got one good lead, but that's principally why I'm in Washington. When Chuck Martin left town, he also left his masseur's equipment at the All-On Athletic Club. Mr. Stevens and I were figuring that might possibly lead someplace. That's all? That's all, Dave. One kit of masseur's equipment put out by Steiner Brothers in Detroit. But as they say in the law books, the smallest lead often brings the biggest result. Good morning, miss. I have an appointment with Mr. Ross. Uh, Waldo R. Jackson is the name. Attorney at law. All right, Mr. Jackson. Now, suppose we stop talking in circles. Just what does this mean? It means just what I asked, Mr. Ross. What's going on between you and a young woman named Dorian Vallandam? Uh, do you mind if I smoke? Now, look, Mr. Don't tell me you're not acquainted with Miss Vallandam. Believe me, it won't well, do you What are you trying to pull? Just who are you, anyway? Now, Mr. Ross, don't get excited. Sit down and relax. Who are you? What are you pulling? I demand that you tell me. Hmm, nice cigar. Wait, you... uh, Mr. Ross, I honestly don't feel you're in a position to demand anything. Now, please sit down. Well, that's better. You haven't learned to control that excitability, have you? She said you were a high-strung individual. She? Dory Valandam said? Miss Valandam. Well, you are representing her, aren't you? This is some kind of a hold-up, I imagine. Huh? Oh, dear, Mr. Ross, you are high-strung. Of course I don't represent Dory and Valandam. I never laid eyes on that young woman. What? But you... It's fortunate for you she isn't within hearing distance. As I say, I don't know the woman, but I don't suspect she'd relish such a false accusation. But you said I that... said what's going on between you two. But it was my informants provided me with the knowledge. No, it wasn't Miss Vallandam who said Buck was high strung. Buck! Mildred does call you Buck, doesn't she? B Mildred! Oh, yes, that's who I'm representing. Mrs. Arthur Bruce Ross. Oh. She's put up with your Lothario antics long enough, Mr. Ross. Before she left for Miami, she gave me explicit instructions. If you hadn't changed... Mildred, my wife hired you to spy on me. Well, I, I wouldn't put it that way exactly. Let's say she retained me to have your activities checked on as evidence in her divorce action. Divorce? And if I say so myself, your activities have been quite active indeed. Uh, now, as for instance... Uh, Last night, subject and Miss Dorian Vallandam, a television actress, went to the following night class. My wife, Mrs. Ross, wants a divorce. Well, she will after she sees these notes, won't she, Mr. Ross? <laughs> well, you find it amusing? <laughs> yes, I find it very amusing. In fact, I find it hilarious. Well, yeah. What's that? <laughs> now, see. Here, yeah, Mr. Ross. Now, look, you, you, <laughs> you'd better sit down, Mr. Jackson. After you hear what I tell you, you'll find it hilarious also. <laughs> In fact, I absolutely guarantee you will. <laughs> Back to the club date in just a moment. Friends, here's a helpful suggestion that will add to your family's fun and enjoyment on Christmas. While you're doing the rest of your Christmas shopping... Get some packages of healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Hang glistening packages of Wrigley's Spearmint on your tree. They are white, red, and green, real holiday colors. And they'll give your tree an added attractive touch of color and cheer. Slip a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum into Christmas stockings. They'll delight the children. Remember, too, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a wholesome, non-filling treat for your family to enjoy after those big holiday meals. So for extra holiday enjoyment that costs very little, get a supply of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Act three of tonight's story on the FBI in Peace and War, The Club Date. To Chief of Police Manley, Orlon, Indiana. Answer received from Steiner Brothers in Detroit. New equipment forwarded last month to Chuck Martin, Metropolitan Health Club, New York City. Suggest meeting New York at your earliest convenience. Sign it Stevens and Reynolds, FBI. <laughs> so you told him your informants had all the info on him, huh? I did. And his wife was ready to get a divorce. You hit him with that, too. I certainly did. Well... Come on, come on. How much did he give you for mum's the word? He gave me the shock of my life. What? What do you mean, 
Shock of your life. Folks, our dear sucker, Mr. Ross, said something we just didn't count on. Yeah? He said... Yeah? He wants a divorce. No. What's a divorce? That's what he said. He's been wanting one for the last ten years, he said. Only the missus would never consent. Oh, my <laughs> age. Can you imagine that? We sure didn't count on something like that, did we? We sure didn't count... <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. We're so glad you're amused. Tom, to be sure. You don't think it's funny? Dropping ten, maybe fifteen Gs. Always good for a laugh. I'm holding my side. What? Who said anything about dropping ten Gs? What do you mean, who said? You said. You know, every time you open your yap, Waldo, I don't like now, it. Now, wait so a minute, Chuck. Now, wait a minute. Don't jump off the deep end. I hear Waldo's brain cooking. Thank you, Dory, dear. Cooking what? Well, when our friend Mr. Ross sprung the unexpected on me, I was taken aback. Naturally. Naturally. But only for the moment. So the man wants a divorce, I said to myself. So Waldo will give it to him. Huh? In fact, that's the reason I'm in the man's office, to arrange for the divorce and the financial settlement. Ah! Financial settlement, that's like money? That's exactly like money, Chuck. Normally it's called alimony. However, the plan I worked out with Arthur Bruce does away with long, drawn-out payments. The plan we worked out calls for one payment only. A flat figure of $35,000 payable upon my return with legal drawn document at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Now, I think that's rather funny, don't you? Uh, Miss Wilson, will you tell Mr. Jackson I'm ready to see him now? And it is further ratified, approved, confirmed, and adopted by the court and made a part of this agreement set out in full herein and the parties are hereby directed to carry out all the provisions thereof done in open court, the date, signatures, and so forth. So, that's about all there is to it, Mr. Ross. How does that sound to you? Well, it sounds very interesting. Uh, Don't you think so, Steve? I certainly do. Interesting, to say the least. Yes. Oh, I hope you don't mind my having Mr. Stevens here to advise me, Mr. Jackson. Mine? On the contrary, sir, I'm delighted as an attorney. I think it only proper that you be represented. In fact, I wouldn't have it otherwise. Neither would I. And now, if this agreement is satisfactory... Mr. Jackson. Sir? May I ask one question? Any question at all. What about visitation? Uh, What about what? Visitation. What about it? Surely you've included a provision on children. Well, if the two are getting a divorce, I think it unlikely. Mr. Stevens is referring to my boy at prep school, Mr. Jackson. Arthur Bruce, Jr. Oh, your boy at prep school. Surely you've included a provision on him. A visitation provision. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now, frankly, Mr. Stevens, (laughs) I forgot. (laughs) Let me go on record as saying... I have no objection whatever to including it. Well, I'm going to see that you go on record, Mr. Jackson. I have no objection, believe me. It wouldn't make any difference if you did. Well, I don't. No objection, whatever. You just name it, and I'll include it. You're very obliging, Mr. Jackson. My client is anxious to have this settled, sir. And to tell the truth, so am I. My schedule has me in Miami this time tomorrow. Mine has me in Washington. Well, then, if Mr. Ross will give me his check, I'll give him my word to include the provision in the matters behind us. That's all there is to it, huh? That's all. Well, what do you think, Steve? Well... I have a certified check here... For 25000 made out to Mr. Jackson. Uh, for 35000 I believe. No, no, I think Mr. Stevens has the one for thirty-five. Oh. Uh-huh. And I also have one here for 10000 and another for fifteen. Uh, you do have the one for thirty-five, don't you, Steve? <laughs> All those checks, uh, you, you must have been expecting to settle this. Yes, I've been collecting them for Uncle Sam with that very thought in mind. For whom? Uncle Sam. I'm afraid you also forgot to include a provision for him. Well, I have no objection to including any provision for relatives. Well, long as you're willing to go on record... I am, completely willing. Is Sam on the wife's side or the husband's side? Well, which would you say, Steve? I'd say he's on the government's side. On whose side? The government's. Wouldn't you say that, Arthur? Oh, I would, indeed. The government's side. That's what he'd say. <sighs> something tells me something's going on here, and that something Jackson's not in on. What's going on? You are, Mr. Jackson. You're going on record. I'm already on record. I know, but you're going on again. Oh. You're one of those agents, huh? Uh Uh-huh. FBI. That's right. Federal Bureau of Investigation. How do you like that? I like it, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Ross, this was a dirty trick, but I'm going to give you some free advice anyway. Go ahead. A man should never play around when his wife's away. 
It only leads to trouble. That's my advice, Mr. Ross. Thanks. I'll remember it. Okay, Waldo, let's go. Where? Where? Why, to the athletic club, of course. After a trying day, there's nothing like a brisk massage, is there? No, there's nothing like it. <sighs> to think last New Year's resolution was a solemn promise to make this New Year's resolution outside the pokey. Oh, well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, eh? All right, Uncle Sam, let's go. With the apprehension of Waldo Jackson and Chuck Martin, a very clever swindle was removed from the active files of your FBI. Both men went to prison for terms of six years. Dorian Vallandam and Joan Bryce were sentenced to serve two years in a women's penitentiary. Their separate confinement was the final booking of the club date. Friends, we want to remind you that it's a good idea to have plenty of healthful, delicious Wrigley Spearmint in your home for the holidays. Hang some glistening packages of Wrigley Spearmint on your Christmas tree. They'll give your tree an extra touch of color and good cheer. Give the children an added treat by putting a few packs of Wrigley Spearmint in their Christmas stockings. And have some to pass around to everyone during family get-togethers. Remember, too, Wrigley Spearmint gum is an ideal treat to top off hearty holiday meals. Because chewing Wrigley Spearmint freshens the taste, sweetens the breath, and aids digestion. So get some packages of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum for happy holidays. Remember, that's Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> In tonight's story, Alan Hewitt played the role of Waldo Jackson. Waldo Grise was Arthur Ross. This radio dramatization for the FBI and Peace and War was written by Jack Anson Fink. These programs are produced and directed by Betty Mandeville. All names and characters used on the program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This program is based upon Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. And the broadcast does not imply endorsement, authorization, or approval by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you real chewing enjoyment, invite you to listen to next Wednesday's story, The Handyman, on the FBI in Peace and War. Same time, same station. 